everybody, my name is Patrick, I'm a drone engineer at Arc Electronics in Salt Lake City, Utah. And today this is going to be a total tutorial on how to use uh, ROS2 uh, and PX4 uh, to create a custom mode where, where you can do teleoperation. Uh, previously we have made uh, off-board mode tutorial on the same thing. It was very popular, more than 16,000 uh, people watched it, I think. Uh, but the problem with that, that was written a couple of years ago when uh, the interface library wasn't a thing and also it was written in Python, it's kind of hard to maintain so we decided to migrate the idea to the new preferred way of uh, integrating ROS2 with PX4 which is the ROS2 PX4 or PX4 ROS2 interface library so today I'm going to show you that I previously I made a couple of tutorials on custom modes itself a precision landing and a tractor beam repo which is custom modes you should check them out uh, today we are going to go a step further because this is going to be a custom mode with the mode executor which kind of means that uh, or mode is going to have different sub-modes uh, scheduled around it uh, which is like a nice way of going on like one way further or just making sure that things happening in sequence and uh, things have like a beginning and an end so uh, in our case this mode executor is going to schedule different modes around our custom mode that's why it's nice because you can have like multiple custom modes integrated into it so just make sure that you I don't know, have a look and then follow down this video and I think it's time to begin. So let's navigate to our GitHub repository. Uh, here we can uh, see all the code that we created. So this is a ROS2 package. As I said, we had a proper example back in the days. It was written uh, using Python and it was just using the normal offboard controls. So we wanted to upgrade it. It's easier to maintain. This is the preferred mode to uh, use PX for ROS2. So uh, it's pretty much that's what this video is going to be about. Uh, so Teleop, uh, you have to get all these prerequisites. Uh, from now on, you don't need to be worried about the QGC daily build. It should work with the uh, QGC main, or like any QGC version from now on. Uh, then uh, PX4 to pilot, I'm using 116. You might need to adjust the PX4 messages uh, based on the PX4 OS2 interface library submodule. So just be aware of that, that they have to match. And then, yeah, you can go ahead and then clone uh, this uh, uh, workspace. And then uh, you just uh, go to the uh, workspace itself. And then you should initialize the submodules. Uh, for, for this package, we have two submodules. One is the PX4 messages, another one is the PX4 to interface library. Uh, if you don't do this step uh, later on, uh, when you try to build the package, it's going to cry. So you should do this, uh, and as I said, make sure that you have matching versions. So uh, this uh, package or like workspace with the current PX4 messages should work with PX4 1.16. But if you are watching this video in the future, you might need to adjust it and then uh, yeah, just if you navigate to the uh, PX4 um, uh, interface library, you can find a description about this issue. And then another thing here, uh, first you have to build these submodules and then you can build all the remaining packages because they depend on, on it. So for example, if you do Qualcomm build first, you will get an error, you will be like, oh, what's going on? So just make sure that you build these first and then once you build them, you can source the workspace and then build the rest of the packages. I uh, just only have to do this once, so later on you can just, uh, if you make modifications, you can only just build that package. So yeah, as I said, it built. It's way faster here because I cut out the building process. And then after that you can build the remaining packages. And I think it's going to be also pretty quick in this video at least. And yeah, it's on the way. Then let's see the example. So let's go ahead and run the example. You need a couple of terminals open for this. Uh, you can go ahead and then uh, start a simulation. You can pick any word and any uh, drone that you would like to uh, test this uh, demo with. Uh, I'm using 1.16, so if you're watching this in the future, as I said, message compatibility matters with the PX4 and the PX4 messages submodules. So just to be aware of that, that you might need to fix it. You can find description to it on the PX4 Lost interface library if you get an error like that. Then you go ahead and then copy the commands. So you run the micro DSH just for communication purposes. And then you can just open QGC. I'm using one of the latest QGCs. 
uh, so web custom mod should work with that from now on and then uh, to actually run the package and there is a launch file I'm gonna talk about why I have a launch file it is actually like a parameter that I read uh, but you can also just do and the node itself uh, I'm gonna demonstrate quickly uh, how the launch file works but then I'm just gonna switch to the uh, running the uh, node itself because uh, it has a bit nicer logging with some colors so I think it's better for the video at least so yeah it, you can see that it registered uh, but yeah, then just go ahead and then uh, run the easy way around and once that's done you also have to run the teleop package which is pretty much how our uh, um, keyboard inputs gonna be converted into uh, raw pitch yo and toro so just go ahead and you can see all the instructions on the right and here so actually this is not a live video but essentially i'm gonna control the drone with this keyboard in a minute so you have to arm the drone and uh, this is for safety purposes if you want you can like modify this in the code but otherwise you arm the drone and then after that you can select the uh, custom mode which is teleoperation but as i said this is a uh, mode custom mode uh, custom mode executor or like mode executor itself so it means it has a subroutine so when you select that mode that things happening before and happening after um, otherwise you could use it as a normal um, custom mode as well but then you have to modify your main function but anyway so as you can see I'm controlling the drone uh, using the keyboard uh, it's like W A S D and you can also adjust the speed uh, it's pretty straightforward the thing that I had to modify the uh, already existing uh, teleop roster package because that was made for ground robots which, which can obviously just go forward and turn here with the drone you can actually go sideways and then uh, uh, turn and up down uh, pretty easily and also uh, the coordinate system in px was a bit different than in ROS so I also accounted for that in the package itself but if you want to modify it you might need to change the Z a bit or something like that just look into the code and we are also going to walk through that together but so uh, as you can see I changed the speed and then just using the keyboard I can move around pretty easily how it works now that you can either uh, stop the node using the Ctrl+C c to quit or after uh, I think it's like 60 seconds uh, if it doesn't get any input, then it just automatically goes to the next state in the state machine, which is uh, pretty much like landing. And uh, yeah, I think that was pretty much it. So let's go ahead and then uh, have a look on the code. Just uh, please open uh, any kind of uh, code editor. I'm using VS Code. I opened it. Uh, I opened my workspace uh, in px to look at the packages that we have so as i said we have those two submodule packages we don't need to worry about those too much and that is there are the two packages i made so one of them is the teleop, teleop twist keyboard uh, so this is pretty much a drone version of the originally existing teleop uh, pretty similar things you can go ahead and then read it through uh, i will also show you in a minute it's a very easy python script uh, nothing super complicated about it so let's have a look on the actual code yeah, so you can see uh, importing some uh, ROS and Python stuff uh, and also like some requirements to be able to get uh, recapture the keyboard input and then you have the move, bi uh, move binding so like which key corresponds to what and then you get the key values uh, and then uh, also you have to have your ROS stuff so I'm using publishing the speed and I'm also publishing uh, teleop active just to make sure that you know like for example if you uh, forward to uh, I know um, touch the keyboard then the drone is going to land safely so it's not gonna run out of battery or anything so as I said uh, you uh, create those publishers and then it's a, a pretty easy logic uh, you can see that you get the values so raw pitch your turtle and then uh, you can also see that the Z sign I was talking about previously, so to account for the different coordinate systems in PX4, uh, compared to ROS2, and then yes, it's just a main function to uh, make it run. So let's have a look on the actual package that's very important here, which is 
and the teleop. So as you can see, there is an executor and also like a, a teleop. So the executor, as I said, how it works. So our custom mode is gonna be part of a ecosystem, let's say, or like a subroutine. So in this case, I assume that uh, before I get into teleop, I want my drone to take off, and then once I'm done with teleop, I want my drone to land automatically uh, and then disarm. Um, for me, I'm making this because previously I showed you just how to have a custom mode, which would mean that you can just plug this teleop mode and then select it, and once you're done with it, nothing happens, the drone goes back to position or whatever. But in this case, uh, there is like a sec sequence that's gonna go on. So when you start this teleop mode, it, the drone is going to take off, and then uh, you can be in the teleop, and once you're done, it's safely going to land. So here you can see uh, a couple of ROS related things and also the state machine and how it works. So when you activate your mode then it checks a bunch of stuff, so everything is safe, you can go ahead and then uh, on deactivate kind of the same thing happens like okay what was the cause of deactivating, was it that we finished and then if you have that, yeah, let's go ahead uh, with it. Then there is the state machine I was talking about, uh, it's pretty straightforward. And uh, why it's really nice because uh, in the ROS to PX for interface library you don't, you don't need to worry about uh, everything and also messing with marbling. So for example, take off or blend, you can just uh, see the definition. These are already uh, implemented in the library, so you don't need to you know, do any additional ROS stuff for it or any additional uh, PX for marbling communication. So you can just go ahead and then look at the code how you can use these uh, functions and then just use it. So as you can see from takeoff, we go to the, the operation mode and then uh, for safety purposes and demonstrating that uh, if everything goes all right, then we are just going to land if something happens. Uh, so we get like, I don't know, like uh, something wrong with the code, then we are just going to uh, return to land. And then uh, once we do that, we are going to land and uh, we will wait for this arm. So this is a pretty nice sequence and it's really cool because you can plug in any kind of mode there. You can have multiple modes plugged in there. Uh, so for example if you have like five different custom modes you can have them all in this code and then they would have they, they follow up each other in a sequence. Uh, so yeah just go ahead and then open the uh, teleop as well. So regarding the teleop this is the customer I was talking about, same thing, unactivate, deactivate, and update support that takes care of the state machine, kind of, like the updating the things. Then he can, you can see the PX4 and the PX4 ROS2 things, and also the ROS2 things themselves. So obviously I have to implement subscribers for the topics I created, but it has already implemented some of the things for us. And then let's have a look on the CPP. Here you can see the name of the mode, so you can name it however you want it to. I'm just going with the basic tell operation. And then there is the constructor. Uh, you pretty much uh, have all these PX for us to uh, like um, functions or like functionalities, maybe that's a better way to say it, already implemented. And then you can you also have to create your own subscribers for the custom topics that you made and load parameters uh, so this is a function uh, where i kind of created the launch file for so it's kind of like a timeout if you i know let's say you say like okay if i don't use the keyboard for i don't know two minutes then just land if you say like okay 10 minutes you can land it's just a safety thing and like a nice thing also to demonstrate how parameters uh, work in ROS and also like I can I, you can inc incorporate them into PX for logic. Uh, besides that, uh, unactivate so just log it that it's activated and then uh, you can also uh, deactivate at the end like we deactivate it and then you also log this. Um, and what's nice so these RCRCPP infos they show up in the terminal and they can be related to your custom mode and you can, they can also be related to your uh, custom mode executor so the executor itself so you just have to like locate these things okay so what is actually printing now when I'm when I, where am I where am I at in my logic uh, so yeah I think 
I think that's really cool. And uh, yeah, so you can just see it on the terminal. Let's go back to the CPP. And yeah, so this is the update set point. This is the key kind of, but since we have a very basic logic, it's not taking up too much space. We pretty much just get the values and then uh, adjust them based on our yaw value uh, to make sure it's reasonable when we go forward and if we already turn them we're going to go to the right direction and we don't need to worry about the z sign much uh, in this case because as I said already it's publishing in the right uh, coordinate system uh, from the teleop keyboard itself besides that very basic C++ stuff CMAX list uh, package.xml um, make sure that you have the required dependencies and I should be good to go. So thank you so much for following along this uh, ROS2 PX4 LEO custom mode, custom mode executor uh, tutorial. I hope that you uh, can go ahead and then try this, play with it, modify it according to your needs. And uh, if you have any questions, please let us know. Also, if you would like me to implement a joystick based version of this keyboard thing, I'm more than happy to do so. Or if you would like to uh, see how you can just have it as a mode, so not with an executor, just you know, like as my previous tutorials that you should check out precision landing in a tractor beam or uh, uh, custom modes itself. So I can also show you that later on. But this was pretty much it. And also, a big announcement that we are going to be at Roscon 2025 in Singapore. So if you are interested in drones and you want to learn more and you end up going to the Roscon, then please come to our uh, workshop where we can teach you all this kind of stuff. So thank you so much for following along and see you around.